Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Rock Island taking a look at a Turkish Mauser. This is specifically a 1903-30 short rifle with a folding bayonet. And the folding bayonet is a very scarce variation to actually find, so that's why we're taking a look at this one. Uh, a very brief bit of backstory on Turkish Mausers, or Ottoman Empire Mausers. Uh, the Ottoman Empire was responsible for some of the very large early uh, purchases of Mauser rifles. And this is it's largely because of the Ottomans that Mauser was able to build itself into the, the real behemoth of an arms company that it would be in the 20th century. And the Ottoman Empire just kept coming back and buying new version after new version after new version. It was like phones today, the Ottomans are always getting, you know, well, it's been five years since you had your last pattern of Mauser, and we have a newer, better version now. Perhaps you would like to upgrade. So their contracts kept going, you know, the early patterns, the, the 1890 pattern rifles, there'll be 1893 pattern rifles, there'll be 1903 pattern rifles, they'd have some 1898 rifles. And eventually, by the 1930s, this had left them with this really kind of ridiculous mixture of all sorts of different guns. Uh, perhaps most importantly, a lot of the early ones, all the early ones, were chambered for 7.65mm, um, 7.65 Mauser. Uh, but then they had changed that to 8mm, 7.92. And one of the big things they wanted to do in the 1930s was standardize with 8mm Mauser. That was, that was the cartridge they wanted to use, so they wanted to bring all the old 7.65 guns up to the new caliber. And that would include short rifles like this one. So um, initially in 7.65 there were two versions of basically carbine um, that had, one had a, a just under an 18 inch barrel and one had a little over a 21 inch barrel. Um, carbines, like a lot of countries did. They'd have the the infantry full-length rifle and the cavalry carbine, uh, and the Ottomans did the same thing. Well, when they changed to 7.92 by 57 Mauser, that was a more powerful cartridge than the 7.65. And as the Germans had discovered, a little 18-inch barreled carbine in 8mm Mauser has a tremendous amount of muzzle blast when you're shooting you know, full-power rifle ammunition that's intended for machine guns and full-length infantry rifles. And so this is why you don't generally see a German uh, military carbine with a little short stubby barrel like you see in many other countries. They made them for a very short time, and then realized this is just way too uncomfortable for guys to be shooting next to each other. Let's extend the barrel out to what became kind of the universal short rifle length. And the Turks would do the same thing uh, with their short rifles. So the 1937, or the 1930 pattern, uh, updated like this one, has basically a 24 inch barrel on it. Um, that's probably enough backstory on this. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at it, and I'll show you how we can see the, the lineage of this rifle pre-conversion. At some point I really need to do a full-on series about uh, all of the Turkish Mauser developments and upgrades and conversions, because I think there's a fantastic uh, lineage there to get into, but uh, we don't have time for that today. So we'll start with this guy. Uh, a couple distinctive features. So first off, the high hump here on the receiver tells us that this is definitely a 1903 pattern of gun that was designed for a specific type of stripper clip, and it is very noticeable. Uh, secondly, we have this notch cut out in the front of the receiver. That tells us that this was originally a 7.65 millimeter gun. Those rifles actually have slightly shorter receivers than the purpose-built 8 millimeter ones, because the cartridge was shorter. So in order to allow it to fit a stripper clip of 8 millimeter, the receiver was notched out just slightly there. Our receiver markings have been updated when this gun was rebuilt. Uh, so ASFA is the name of the Turkish arsenal, TC is Turkish Republic, uh, Ankara is where the work was actually done, and 1937 is the date of uh, the refurbishment on this particular rifle. A number of these parts, like the magazine floor plate here, have serial numbers in Turkish on them, or in uh, Turkish numbers. Got another one there. The cocking piece has a Turkish serial number on it. And in fact, the bayonet has a Turkish serial number on it. Those numbers would all have been put on prior to 1928, because it was 1928-1929 when Turkey converted to standard what we would consider Arabic numerals. And that's why the rear sight on this rifle uh, has Arabic numerals on it. Uh, the early pattern 
Turkish Mausers have Turkish numbers on the, uh, the rear sights. And we also have Arabic numbers for the current serial number, which on this one is only two digits, uh, only 46. There are very few of these uh, folding bayonet models recorded. There are actually two here at Rock Island right now, and they are number 42 and 46. So I'd love to find some more serial numbers and see if perhaps um, there were only a few hundred made, perhaps? Uh, or, you know, some more data on this would be interesting. Unlike most of the Turkish 1930s rebuilt guns, uh, this does not have a disassembly disc in the stock. In fact, um, as far as I've been able to tell, none of the 1930 short rifles do, which is a little bit unusual, but there it is. All right, and then clearly the most interesting bit here is the bayonet itself. First off, the 1930 short rifles are easily distinguished by this uh, style of front sight. Looks kind of like the German uh, Car 98A front sights. But they will then have typically a just a plain rectangular, plain flat square barrel band uh, with a bayonet lug on the bottom. In fact, these, these bayonet, these nose caps are very similar in style to Carcano nose caps. Uh, both this one, which you can see is kind of cut back here at the top of the barrel, but also sort of the standard 1930 short rifle one, which just has a, a simple bayonet lug on the bottom. Now, we've got a cleaning rod in there, and then to use this bayonet, we have a spring-loaded lug. You pull that back, and you simply pivot this around, and that lug locks into that notch. And presto, it's not the strongest I've ever seen. It's just held in place by that one cross pin. Uh, the bayonet itself is slightly scooped out on the top, and that's, uh, I think, just to better fit against the, the round surface of the wood stock. We've got a flange on the bottom to give it some strength. Uh, it's a, it may be short, but it's a pretty stout little bayonet, so I think it's unlikely to probably break or bend. There is some question as to, like, how useful is this really? I suppose I don't want to get stabbed by it. Um, but it's a lot shorter than a lot of the other bayonets that were in use at the time. You know, you know, that long is all sticking past the muzzle. This is kind of like the FG42 bayonet. Um, someone wanted it on there, but it, you really have to wonder how effective it would be. Putting it back is just a simple matter of pull the spring latch forward and fold it back around. Uh, it's interesting that there's only one one lug on this side, so you can it, it doesn't lock it like perfectly in position. It can bend out to that side, where it's got a you know, a lug on either side on the front to hold it nice and and sturdy when you're trying to use it. Oh, and I should point out uh, you had a, a sling slot and a sling swivel. Well, you got the same thing here on the front. So a sling uh, swivel on the bottom and a sling bar on the side, so that this can be carried easily either over the shoulder. Uh, or across the back. Note that uh, the bolt handle has been turned down. That is a little bit unusual for Turkish rifles, but it is this is standard for the 1930 short rifles and carbines that the uh, Turks put together. To me, it's guns like this one that kind of prove the point that a gun doesn't have to be uh, hugely valuable or you know hugely desired on the collector market to be really interesting. I think there's a, a fantastic amount of backstory to a lot of these Turkish rifles, and that you'll find these really neat subvariants of them, like this folding bayonet pattern that people aren't familiar with, a lot of people don't expect to find, and I think they're really quite cool. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.